hello guys. It's below freezing outside, so I think it's an important day to work on the cooling system of our 48 Chevy. So without further ado, let's kick the tires. Where are my tires? And light the fires. Come on. The water goes down through the radiator, then to the water pump, which forces it on. Then it enters the engine. Once in the engine, this river of water flows first through the jackets around the cylinders, uniformly cooling the six-cylinder walls. Next, the stream goes up into the cylinder head, where its direction is so controlled as to drive it against the valve seats. Leaving the valve seats, it circulates through the head, and after it has done all the cooling it can do, the water comes out through the hose at the top and flows back into the radiator. Okay, in order to get my generator to finish that, I have to get this arm onto the water pump. So we're going to move on this video and we're going to do cooling system. You piggy thing. Okay, come on. Everything's nice and sticky with Permatex. Got Permatex on both sides of my gasket. These holes should all be blind and closed off from the cooling jackets, the water jackets, but I still Permatex my bolts just it just feels right, okay? Just feels like the right thing to do. Start with getting the other three bolts in place. I know I'm blocking you, but not much I can do about that. Alright. Now this dog leg should go so it's towards the back. That. Alright. I'm going to temporarily install this. This bolt goes on the back side. Or at least it's supposed to. And that's one thing I do not have on the shelf, is a new belt. So I'm going to temporarily reinstall the old one. Just to finish it up for you.
Even though Emily Post may never approve it as good etiquette, the well-known business of cooling coffee in a saucer is an excellent illustration of what happens in the radiator of your car. In the saucer, the hot coffee is spread out thin over a large area so that the heat has a chance to escape. Cold is only the absence of heat, and heat doesn't just disappear. It has to be carried away through the air. Now, if you blow on the coffee, <laughs> that helps a lot. Even more heat is carried away by the greater circulation of air. That's why large surfaces help heat to escape fast. More liquid is exposed to the air. More heat is carried away. Now let's put a cover on the saucer. Stand it up on end. Run tubes through it like this. Put a fan over here. And what have we? A radiator, a big surface, plus air circulation. That's what carries away the heat from the water in the radiator of your car. Well, if you removed your radiator support, or whatever they call it, um, you're going to find it a little difficult to put in. First of all, um, between the sheet metal and the support, there should be um, some strips of canvas, rubberized canvas, or you know whatever you want to substitute it with. Um, get that back in there. And then the method I find that works the best for me to get these four bolts back in on each side is to use a pry bar down on the sheet metal you can see I'm lifting the whole fender assembly um, and get that top bolt the top bolts gonna be the hard one um, so I start with a I start with a like a scratch all and get my holes lined up and then a bigger punch I'll see if I can even get this bolt started now that I'm talking about it. But you've got you've got the uh, actual fender on the top fighting you. You've got the inner fender, and you're going through the inner fender and this front shield piece here, this other inner fender piece. So you have all these layers, and uh, you got to get them all lined up, and they tend to sag course because gravity our wonderful friend and so you got to get all back up into position and in my case I find that if I get this top bolt back in then the others line up pretty well Let me just make sure we're doing okay there and then we'll run them all back in Oh, and the other thing is do not tighten any down until they are all in. You've got a lot, you've got a lot you're lining back up. This is not only for hanging the radiator, but it's also the support between side to side between the body. So you've got to get that all in alignment before you tighten anything down. Now, of course, you're also going to have two carriage bolts clear down in the bottom of the frame. And I would recommend putting those in first before you start in on the side bolts. There's also a pad underneath. Be sure to get that under there.
Now a word about the radiator. This is the original Harrison, which you can see there, maybe, perhaps. And you can see all this lovely damage. There was a big old hole right on the top there. So I took this in to my radiator guy and uh, he fixed the hole and he tested it. You know, these things don't run a whole lot of pressure. Um, but yeah, we'll see. It may work, it may not. I always like to have the original radiator in there. Um, but uh, as far as he was concerned, it was working. So, And you saw I um, used tape measure and got it centered in the bracket there. And I thought I had a new cap, but I guess I don't. So I'll have to get one of those because this one's really bad. But uh, I think while I'm here, I'm going to put this shroud on. To make sure the seats are cool, water is squirted directly on the valve seats. The cooler the seat and valve, the harder they are and the longer they will last. This kind of cooling keeps valves working efficiently and gives them a long and useful life. In the modern car, all the parts inside the engine get treated to a new kind of cooling. These water jackets run the full length of the cylinder, assuring uniform cooling over the full length of the cylinder wall. This also means that pistons are kept cooler, as they are always running against these cooler cylinder walls. Piston rings and pistons, properly cooled, keep in contact with the oil film on the cylinder walls. Oil temperature is kept down, cylinder bores remain truly round and straight, all parts run cooler. So for our hoses, I bought bought a kit that's available. They're stamped with the GM logo. You get the steel pipe, you get your clamps, and then I also bought heater hose clamps. I got mine from Chevs of the 40s. They have everything available individually or as a set. Looks like I need to trim off about two and a quarter inches off the bottom of this top hose, so I'm going to do that real quick. Just like so. And we'll start putting it on. Okay, just a couple notes if you're taking any. I got it all on there. Um, you might want to loosen these, at least these two radiator bolts, if not all four, or do this before you tighten the radiator down, and uh, so you're able to get some slop in here to get this on the water pump. And then also, this is a brand new. Airtex pump. I'm not too crazy about the brand, but it's what I could find that was readily available and not just incredibly 
incredibly expensive. So I think it'll work, but the casting was definitely larger than the hose, the old style casting. And so I had to get a new machine screw for this clamp that was longer. Um, I just couldn't get the play in the clamp that I needed. folks I think that's gonna do it for this project today uh, everything every obstacle difficulty I ran into I think I've already addressed need to get a cap coolant cooling system is hundred percent done now I'm gonna show you something fellas that if you're trying to convince your bride that maybe you need one of these cars you know this might just tip the scales in your favor and she'll say yes because I don't know of a single woman out there that can resist this okay now you saw me hook the heater hoses directly up to the normal uh, heater core in the firewall there but that's not the way this car originally had them this heater core was in line so it came from the engine in out and the hoses went down there and then they came back up from down there back to the engine so where did they go they went to an accessory heater under the floor or under the floor under the seat you can see the lines going in the wire for the motor the motor hanging out down below the floor and whatever Chevrolet guy did this just did a heck of a job hacking a hole in the floor but this was a Chevrolet optional accessory um, for sure in the late 40s I don't know what all years you know I haven't researched that I don't know what all years it was offered um, certainly certainly 46 47 48 I believe I don't know what all but I'll show you here Here's the top under the seat. You can see the coils down below there, the fan, the shroud. I mean, you talk about burning your biscuits, this dude will get it done. So, we're not going to um, bother hooking this one up for now. Um, it's uncertain whether it leaks or not. So, I'm going to leave that up to the owner later if he wants to hook it up he can um, but just because of time and money we're, we're just gonna 
do the regular heater core for now. So, Okay, what's next? Well, I need to prime the oil pump, put oil in it, prime it, then we can put the distributor in. Ignition system will be next. Um, hook some wires up and do some nickel and dime stuff, and then we will be ready to run it for the first time in many, many years. So come back if you want to see that happen. We will fire it up for the first time with you, and I will drive it for the first time with you whenever that happens. But we're getting close. So thanks for watching.